Welcome to Keep What You Earn, your judgment and jargon-free zone for entrepreneurs of all levels. Get ready to learn how to scale your business, save money in taxes, and create a business that grows your wealth. If it feels like the financial side of business is like eating your vegetables, well then think of this podcast as the ranch dressing to make the process a little more enjoyable. My name is Shannon Weinstein. I'm a CPA and business owner on a mission to simplify money and empower others through knowledge. I hope this episode inspires you to take action, but remember that the information we share is for educational purposes only and is not individual tax advice. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start the show. So I know everyone is trying to become more omnipresent on social media and all the platforms online right now. And one of the things I'm noticing in the marketplace right now is a a spike in the number of people now going all in on YouTube. And it's really interesting. And I know video is by far one of the fastest ways to grab attention and to build intimacy and that no like trust factor. So I wanted to bring in an expert who has not only successfully implemented a YouTube channel, you know, has seen the evolution of YouTube, but also now helps entrepreneurs get started with their video content And uh, I'm really excited to welcome onto the show today, Augie Johnston. Augie is a 36-year-old ex-YouTuber, former professional basketball player, and turned entrepreneur. He's currently making waves in the video editing industry as a result of his promising startup called VidShops. And Augie works with full-time YouTubers, online personalities, thought leaders, and anyone who creates online videos for their businesses. Today, we're going to be unpacking with Augie some of the top ways to grow on YouTube, start a YouTube channel, and basically convince you that it's not too late to get started. Hey, Augie, welcome to Keep What You Earn. Hey, thanks for having me on. Of course. Can you just say hello to our audience and introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, my name is Augie Johnston. Uh, I live here in California where things are way too expensive. And uh, I've been doing stuff online. I'm an online geek. I'm an internet geek. I've been doing stuff online, online business related uh, since like 2010-ish. And uh, still to this day, it's it's my full-time job and love digital marketing. I fell in love with digital marketing many years ago, you know, in 2010 as well. So that's kind of stuff that I'm into. 2010, I'm like, oh, yeah, like a few years ago. And I'm realizing now that's like 13 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy when I hear people that are born like in 2005 or 2008. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I guess people are born then. <laughs> yeah, and they're like grown people too. That's yeah, the freaky yeah. part. So you mentioned that too, right? So let's talk. We're going to talk today about YouTube. And yes. I want to know how did you first get started on YouTube or what prompted your curiosity around YouTube? Like how early were you in its evolution and getting involved with it? Yeah, I was pretty early because uh, like I'm going to throw the date out 2010, 2009 a lot, I guess, but that's kind of where it all began because I uh, moved to Europe and I was playing basketball actually in Europe. And while I was over there, there was no TV uh, in English. So I did watch a lot of YouTube and As I was playing over there, I wasn't really making a lot of money or anything. It was like semi-professional and I wanted to do it forever. So I Googled how to make money online one day and just by trying little projects here and there, uh, eventually watching a lot of YouTube, I stumbled on YouTube, started creating basketball training content on YouTube and you know, since day one, just really, like I said, learned a lot about digital marketing. I think I, even before I released a YouTube video, I'd already published a course. So I was trying to figure out how to sell a course. Um, and that's really where I started getting involved in YouTube and, you know, been doing stuff on there since. And I think a lot of folks who are listening, a lot of entrepreneurs right now are thinking one of two things, and I'm kind of one of them, which is, God, it like, if only I had started on YouTube 10 years ago, and like, it's it's too late to start but also it's a bit of what, how can I actually make money doing it? Am I too late to get into that? Cause I feel like it's almost the same as Instagram where it's, you get in it a little bit later stage and you think, oh, well, that the opportunity has passed to really monetize it or to really grow it. What would you say to folks who kind of think like that what about YouTube? Yeah, I would say you can't think like that because how else are you going to market your business or how else are you going to you know, create valuable content into the atmosphere to get people to find you and build, build kind of brand trust and all that kind of stuff. Because I understand people saying like, Oh, you know, like clubhouse, I don't know if you're familiar with that clubhouse was this big thing, right? Like, so here today, gone tomorrow, 
Vine here today, gone tomorrow. But YouTube is not here today, gone gone tomorrow because it is Google. <laughs> Google is not here today, gone tomorrow. So people for for forever now will continue to create content to rank on Google, create content for YouTube. It's now one of the big dogs. Facebook will always be something where people will be using to drive business back to or drive leads or whatever awareness back to their business. Um, and then everything from there, like I understand, like I remember when people wanted to create Snapchat followings and some people still do. Um, and there's, there's value in doing all that stuff. I, you know, I guess it, it, you have to be a big fish in a small pond, but, uh, if you're not creating YouTube content at this point, then, and you're scared because it's too saturated or whatever, you have to understand too, that more people are getting on YouTube every day. The views are on YouTube are going up, like the amount of views, it's not going down. So how could it be saturated if it's just growing and getting bigger? It's like the universe, it just keeps getting bigger. Um, so anyways, long, long answer there, but yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, so what would you recommend folks do if they wanna get started with a YouTube channel for the first time and how can they strategize it? Cause I feel like there's just so many different directions you can go with it that it's really important to kind of stay focused, but what are you, what's your advice for someone getting started? Yeah, you just have to understand if you're just getting started that your first few videos are not going to be that great and you kind of just need to get practice, right? Everyone wants to be some big time YouTuber, um, but they're not willing to practice. It's like, you know, LeBron James probably practices a billion hours compared to how many minutes he actually plays in a game. But when it comes to like YouTube or online business, people don't want to get the reps in. So that's the first thing is just get started and just get videos online because there's so many different skill sets that it does take. I'm not going to say it's easy, but we're talking, you know, good lighting, right? You know, like videography skills. We're talking, you know, graphic design skills. We're talking, you know, if you want to turn it into a business website uh, design skills and there's copywriting, there's all these different kind of like online digital skills and then camera presence and messaging and all these things that you, you will learn. But the first thing is how do you get a video up onto YouTube? <laughs> so get, get through that. Then, you know, then from there, it's just iteration, iterate on your videos, get 1% better. Every video, 1% better. Every video, um, and learn, be a student of the game, learn about the algorithm and, and how to succeed on YouTube. And what you'll start to see is that there's best practices. It's a pattern. Everyone's talking about the same thing, thumbnails, titles, um, watch time. You'll, you'll, see, you'll see, okay, everyone's talking about the same thing. So that's what matters and focus on that and you'll grow. So let's talk about that for a second. The thumbnails, tiles, and the titles, like what, how does that drive results? Cause I've been hearing that a lot lately that I actually have friends who are like, I have to go film a few thumbnails for YouTube or like take a bunch of pictures and do it for the thumbnail. And I'm like, for the thumbnail picture? And for those of us who are non-YouTubers, we're like, really? But let's talk about the importance of those things because I really want to know why that's such a big focus. Yeah, like in order to grow on YouTube, there's like three main factors and one of them is click-through rate. And that's, uh, if you don't know what that is, it's just the amount of people that actually see your thumbnail up on the screen and how many people actually click it. Uh, and so that's a huge factor. It's number one. It's actually maybe some people say it's the most important, but it's probably number two, uh, to like watch time, creating content that people watch. So back to thumbnails, click through rate essentially, right? It's not just thumbnails because it kind of boils down to three things. It's the, it's the thumbnail. So how do you create a thumbnail? You're, yeah, I'm, I'm new. How do I do it? Just think about how you can create a thumbnail that would create curiosity. That's kind of the thing. When you look at it, do you wonder what the video is about or what happened in the video? Cause that will get somebody to click. So that's your thumbnail. And then the second factor is the title. So the title needs to do the same thing, right? Is there a way that you can kind of do a spinoff of the title with the thumbnail to tell a story that creates curiosity, then you'll have a winning title. And then the last thing is just the video topic, or maybe the first thing is your video topic. Like when you sit down to create a video, it's like there's one of two ways you can do it. You know, you can say, how to add things in Google Sheets, how to add, you know, the formula to add, th add things up or summarize things in, in Google Sheets, like that's a title, a topic. Or you could do like, I don't know. Um, Let's use I, one of I, mine, for example, like, okay, like yeah. my, one of my like boring ass tax topics, right? So let's talk about like tax deductions for business owners. Like how could we make that into a cool <laughs> clickable thing? Okay, yeah, so instead of just, how a how to video why don't you find an example of somebody that did a great job with their tax deductions oh my gosh they wrote this off they wrote that off i'm so surprised that they actually did you know only had to pay a little bit in taxes because of all these strategies so i would just make it that'd be a great topic right if i mm -hmm. saw somebody say he saved 
uh, yeah, $40,000. How, how Augie avoided a million dollars in taxes. Like there that's a go. cool right there. That's, oh, that's a great topic. Yeah. Right. And, and so, um, people want to learn that. And then it's essentially a how to video after that. Um, but that's kind of the, that's like YouTube 2.0 right there. Right. I mean, like back in the day, you, if, if nowadays you're worried about saturation, if you can create videos like that, I'm sure as you open your homepage right now and look through videos, you're finding topics just like that. Uh, yeah. Anyways, that, so title, uh, topic and uh, thumbnail are, are the main ones. Awesome. And then, so pe- let's say you create content, people are watching it, people are viewing it. How do you turn that into actual dollars? Like what are the ways to actually monetize your YouTube to actually generate revenue from it? Yeah, it's a tough question because there's like so many ways. There's actually a lot of ways, uh, but let me talk about the technical things. And the reason I love YouTube is because they're, they're really business friendly because they give you space to put links. So, mm-hmm. you know, on Instagram, you get one link in the bio. On TikTok, I'm not, you get one link maybe in the bio or something like yeah. that. With YouTube, you can put a link in the description. So you hear people say, click the first link in the description. And people sometimes put like 20 links in their descriptions, right? There's like affiliate link, affiliate link, affiliate link, website link, you know, subscribe now link. And that's all good. That's, you know, that's not going to penalize you. Also, you can put a link in the first comment. You can actually put a link in the end card of your video. So at the very end of your video, you delivered a bunch of value. Hey, if you guys want to get my free workout, or if you want to get a product, you know, click the links on screen. And now they give you an end card. that's actually clickable on mobile and everything it's right to your website. So there's that. So that's what you need to do. You need to deliver value, create good videos, and then have good calls to action throughout your video to go to your website and your email. It's the same thing that you hear a million times. If you're brand new to digital marketing, then maybe that's news to you. But yeah, or you can sell a product. You know, we've we've in the past for the basketball training channel, sent people directly to a $19 a month sign up with a free trial on front and it would, it would convert and people would sign up. So that's kind of how you make money in the simplest form, but really uh, there's a lot of ways you can do it. I love it. So what are some of the, the tips you have for growth on YouTube to get people to subscribe to your channel? What are some of the ways that somebody could leverage the tools in their toolkit to be able to grow on YouTube. I mean, we we obviously know creating good content is paramount, right? That people will actually want to watch. But beyond that, are there any other strategies that people can use to accelerate their growth? Yeah, well, when it comes to accelerating growth, it really is all about the algorithm because, uh, you know, what, what it can do for you is it can promote you out. If it thinks you have a good video to everybody that it thinks would be interested in your video. So if it shows it to people that it thinks it would be interested in your video and they click it at a very high click through rate and then go and watch it all the way through, then it shows YouTube, Hey, we did a great job making money because they clicked it and they watched an ad. Uh, so And this video is going to continue to make us money. So we need to continue to promote it out because people are watching it. They're staying on the platform afterwards and watching more videos. They're actually clicking onto his profile. And over the next week, they're binging 100 or showing them 100 ads. Like this is all putting money in in YouTube's pocket. Um, And it's user friendly. The users love it. So to answer your question, it comes down to creating videos that people will click on and that they'll watch all the way through. So how do you do that? And my, my biggest advice is use stories. Okay. It come up, don't in your how to's, how can you relate it to a story? Uh, how can you just go the extra mile to make it a little bit more interesting to keep people watching? And that's kind of the, the key is just to put a little bit more effort into it and your scripting or something like that to keep people watching. And that's how you can trigger the algorithm. One quick example is I, I had a, a Facebook friend, a, a, a great guy who, had a kind of small channel under a thousand subscribers, his video is getting maybe 1000, 2000, 1000, 2000, but all really good stuff. And he comes out with a recent video, it blew up to 190,000 views in less than a week, you know, and it was because people watched it all the way through. That's perfect. How would you recommend that someone like, what are some of the, the top tips, like you said, with the algorithm? How can we leverage the algorithm? What is it looking for? Like you said, is it the, just the cl- like a click through and watching? Or is there any, I guess, favorability to the type of content that you're doing? Well, uh, as far as the type of content you're doing, you have to understand that you're competing against the similar niche, right? So mm-hmm. like I said, YouTube is going to show your video to people that they think would be interested in that topic because they've watched other videos similar, right? right. So... Yeah, you you do have to make videos, I would say, that are maybe better than what's in your niche as far as the watch time, right, and and all and how Mm -hmm. that all goes. So 
you know, Mr. Beast is like the most famous YouTuber. He creates just like challenge videos and not business related or anything like that. A lot for the masses, you know, it's funny. And, and, you know, his watch time is probably so good because he can just yeah. do whatever he, it, that's his only goal. He's not trying to teach you anything. And somebody that's trying to teach you kind of a, like a, a tough topic to understand that takes a lot of brain power and energy, your watch time is just going to be less, but you're only going to be competing mm-hmm. against those with the similar topics. Do you recommend if you're going to, for example, if you're going to start a YouTube channel, I'll use me as an example because it's a great example with an accountant, right? Is if I'm going to start a YouTube channel, right? Traditionally, it's that dry subject matter. And it like uh, you could make it kind of fun. Uh, but let's just say I want to grow on YouTube, you know, and a lot of advice I'm hearing is to, but you should stick to your niche. Like you shouldn't just do what is trending or popular just to get views just to like how much do you kind of compromise the niche for the viral content and and have you seen that work before or like what do you recommend people do like really hone in on the niche and go for it or do you see people kind of just jumping around no you you do need to stick within the niche yeah yeah and i mean as far as like for tough tough topics and stuff that are hard to come up with like i would challenge anybody to really try to get creative because that's where the creative part is is like and it takes so much brain power and and for me my my challenge personally because i'm you want to grow but i'm just kind of like stuck in this overthinking phase where i'm overthinking the topics right when i should just be pushing out content um but I, i do challenge you to try to get creative and you know there's this one youtube a uh, creator named Bia Heza, and he creates business content. He's a young guy. He started kind of doing drop shipping and videos and stuff like that. But it's kind of a stale topic in a way, you know, making money online or online business. And he just finds such good ways to make it interesting because you do have to kind of play that game if you want that kind of growth. If you're if you're okay with just, you know, some views trickling in here and there, then, you know, creating just more basic topics is okay. Um, but yeah, I think there is a lot of value in just trying to get creative with it. Yeah. And I've heard, so I don't know much about this, right. But I've heard rumblings of, you know, turning ads on, on your videos and like making money straight from ads. How does that actually work? Cause someone said, Oh, once I figured out I could turn ads on, I started making a bunch of money and I'm going, <laughs> how? Like, that's all I heard. And I go, what do you mean? Could you just kind of unpack that for those listening? Like how to actually run ads on your YouTube and if it actually makes you any money? Yeah, totally. So that's kind of the cherry on top is the ads that you can make. Uh, you have to be part of the the partner program, which is I think a thousand subscribers and four thousand hours of watch time. So four thousand hours of your videos actually being watched in total. And then uh, the cool thing about AdSense is, like I said, it's the cherry on top. But like a niche that you're in, in those kind of niches, the AdSense revenue is really good. It's it's actually you could get upwards of twenty dollars for a thousand views. That's like the highest end. But like you know, I think at twelve dollars for a thousand views in the make make money niche or finance niche, or um, I I think you're in that niche. But um, anyways, the real estate niche uh, is good. So, but uh, other than that, you know, a lot of it could be really low too, and it's called CPM. You know, how much you're getting paid for a thousand ad impressions. You know, it can be as low as like four dollars or three dollars, um, or even one dollar if you're creating like kids content. Because kids' content can't monetize very well. They don't have credit cards. And there's just laws around it. Um, so anyway, True. that's a whole other conversation, yeah. True. And then if you if you turn on ads, let's say, for your YouTube channel, let's say somebody is in that uh, partner program, do you have any control over what ads show up on your video? Does it have any, any uh, relationship to the content itself? I'm just curious. Yeah, I think you can block certain... Um, ads or certain, I guess, Mm -hmm. I don't know, providers, but, um, I'm not too, too sure about that. Exactly. I've never looked at it too much. Yeah. That's a great question though. I'm sure you can, because, you know, maybe some, some people wouldn't want to have like a Budweiser or or ad or or some kind of ad on their, on Mm -hmm. their video, you know? Yeah, totally. And I'm sure that it would like, it probably knows the ads are probably being targeted based on who's watching the video to align with whatever the subject is anyway, to get more traffic. Um, yeah. Yeah. So let's talk to you about like the video itself. Like there's a ton of boundaries for people to get started on YouTube that are, you know, the the basics, which is I don't like to be on camera or I don't have crazy equipment like Augie does, like may I have the mic set up, may not have a nice camera, good lighting, you know, 
a lot of this stuff gets in people's way because they want it to be perfect or they think they have to be perfect to produce any type of content. So I want you to dispel any of that if you want to also just how, how easy it is to get started. Yeah, it is easy to get started. You can just take out your phone and do it. I would say what, when doing that, you know, you want to get the fundamentals, right? That's it. It's the fundamentals of lighting, audio set behind you. And that's pretty much it, you know, and then I guess, uh, messaging or the words that come out of your mouth, right? The, the scripting, right. scripting. So if you can get those pretty solid with a phone, like you can create really good content. And I've seen people, even clients at VidShops for our, our video editing service go from like 50,000 views in a month to like over 2 million views in a month by, and they're just using their cell phone and, you know, releasing maybe a little bit more content. They changed some things and that's exactly what they did. They released more content than they were, but, um, for that increase, but, but yeah, I mean, the cell phone, it, like I said earlier, it takes me back to the same thing. It's the 1% better. You know, if you start just with your phone, like I, that's how I started with like a terrible, it was a camcorder. It was a long time ago. And, uh, yeah. It was less than $200 for the camcorder. And here I am, I use mirrorless cameras and all kinds of podcast mics and cool lights. And, and I've learned a lot and, but that was, a, you know, many videos, thousands of videos. So you'll, you'll get there. Yeah. What do you think the, the future holds for creators on YouTube? Like we have, I feel like there's a, a ton of different channels we can be on a ton of different platforms and you know, we can go all in on one, we can spread ourselves across multiple. And I know YouTube is curating a lot of curiosity right now. People are like, well, I, I need to get started on YouTube. I need to go all in on YouTube. What do you think? Uh, what do you think the future holds with YouTube? Where do you see it going? And how do you see people using it in the future? Yeah, so one thing they're really starting to get into right now is is like podcasts. And, mm -hmm. and the, the future of, of YouTube is is basically, it's already here. YouTube is cable TV now. And not just yeah. not just in the sense that people are watching YouTube on TV, but they literally sell cable TV now. It's called YouTube I know, we TV. have YouTube TV. So do I. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I mean, it's only, as far as what YouTube's gonna be, it's gonna be it's like a, a huge Google. It's gonna own everything in video. Um, it's, it's starting now to get more interested in podcasts and video podcasts. And it's starting to promote out podcasts and kind of tweaking its algorithm, I think, to kind of give podcasts a little bit different treatment because it's a little bit different of a beast, you know, a 60 minute video mm -hmm. of two people talking. Um, and that's already happening right now. They have a po new podcast tab and, and then short form content. I think they are now they have YouTube shorts and they're tr trying to tackle short form content, but they're actually running into a lot of issues because just not making as much money from the ad revenue from their sh YouTube shorts as they do from their long form ads. Um, so there's that, but, um, you know, I just think, you know, there already are YouTube movies, right. Entire feature films that YouTube is making like a Netflix uh, movie almost. So I think there's gonna be more of that maybe YouTube original stuff. Um, but yeah. Perfect. And can you tell us more about how, I know you've run a video editing service as well. So let's talk about that for a second and how, like the, how essential proper video editing is for uh, success on the platform. Yeah, there is a way you want to edit to keep that watch time, to keep people watching. So that that's definitely a, a factor. And, and along with everything on YouTube too, you know, like the better quality video you can put up there when it comes to everything, the stuff we talked about, you mean the DSLR camera? Yeah, if you could, if you eventually could get to that point, then it does help you a little bit create better quality. And that just helps with everything on YouTube and the editing's part of that and everything else is part of that. But, um, nothing really beats kind of like the good content, like the words that are coming out of your mouth. That's really the number one factor, but, um, everything else helps too. Perfect. And can you tell us a little bit more about your service and what you guys do? Yeah, so we are a flat rate, flat rate video editing service for YouTubers or content creators in general. Uh, back in when I was creating uh, videos for the basketball training channel, I kind of felt that pain of it's one of the biggest issues that, that YouTubers create, uh, face. You know, if they're doing 12 videos a month or eight videos a month, they're spending a lot of time editing. So um, about five or six years ago, I set out to kind of try to solve that. And that's why we created VidChops. And yeah, we, we edit for a lot of a lot of YouTubers now. They have to be a certain size or are you working with it? Just anyone and everyone who wants to create on the platform? Yeah. Anybody that wants to create, we, we have a lot of new, uh, new clients too, that are just getting into the game, which is great because, um, you know, you, if it's not all about being a YouTuber, it's really about using YouTube for your business. And when you 
are leveraging that, then you want you don't want to be editing the videos yourself, right? If you're a business owner and you are running a business and you want to market on YouTube, like we can help you definitely with that. So yeah, we have all kinds of clients. Awesome. Guys, it's not too late to start. It's never too late to start. It's best to do something over nothing on the platform. Get used to it. Learn and uh, give yourself a little grace while you're learning, too. That's what Augie was saying. Like, make sure that you're putting the reps in and getting the feedback, but not expecting some type of overnight YouTube success. I don't think that's really realistic for anybody. Would you agree? Yes. Yes, okay. I would, yes, I would. I would agree. That was a great summary right there. I want to add. <laughs> you must have been paying attention, girl. Good job. Props to you. <laughs> All right, Augie. Thank you so much for hopping on the show today. Just one more reminder for those listening. Where can they find out more about you and what you guys do at VidChops? Yeah, VidChops.com is uh, is the URL if you want to check out the video editing service. And um, if you want to shout, shout out to me or say something to me, at, at Augie Johnson on Instagram is where I kind of most active. Awesome. Thanks for listening, guys. Do you want to explore more about the topics discussed in today's episode? Or maybe you have specific questions on how to apply what you learn. If so, check out the Keep What You Earn community. Join other listeners, entrepreneurs, and experts and get the support you need to get out of overwhelm and into action. Click on the link in the show notes to join now for free and start maximizing the value you get from each and every episode. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating and review on your podcast platform. This small action goes a long way for podcasters to get our message heard by more business owners just like you. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to information about our guests and ways to get in touch with me. We'll see you on the next episode.